we come now to the ten minute rule motion. John Speller. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I beg to move that leave be given to, uh, to, for me to bring in the Planning Agent of Change Bill to require specified planning controls in relation to developments likely to be affected by existing noise sources and for connected purposes. Now, this bill is designed to protect existing music venues from closure or crippling cost arising from the development of new residential properties in their vicinity, especially over questions of noise. So why is this a problem? The Music Venues Trust and UK Music have been campaigning on this for some time and estimate that over a third of music venues have closed over the past decade. Many members of Parliament have examples of much-loved venues in their area that have been closed or are under threat. That's why there has been such widespread and cross-party support for the Bill, as shown by the numbers who have already pledged their support and turn out at this morning's photo call. <coughs> this issue, important issue was also raised on the 3rd of November on the adjournment debate by my honourable friend, the Member for St Helens North. There's also been welcome support from some of the music greats. Sir Paul McCartney today has said, without the grassroots clubs, pubs and music venues, my career would have been very different. If we don't support music at this level, then the future of music in general is in danger. Now, I accept that there are a variety of reasons for the decline in venues, but many relate to changes in the neighbourhood particularly increasingly where redundant commercial or industrial premises are converted to residential, or indeed are knocked down and rebuilt, or as empty sites are developed. Of course, much of this is very welcome. It's part of the regeneration of our inner cities, restoring their historic vibrancy and also creating much-needed homes. However, it can sometimes lead to the loss of what makes parts of those areas attractive in the first place, especially to younger residents. And incidentally, that doesn't just apply to music venues, but to the wider fabric of inner city life. And there are important questions as to how we preserve the vibrancy and diversity of city life more generally across our main conurbations. However, my short bill is a more modest and focused measure. That's adopting the principle of agent of change into planning law. And what that basically means is that when buildings are converted to residential use or a new development is put up, the owner, onus is on the developer, not the venue, to ensure the new dwellings are protected from factors, particularly noise, which could be held to affect their general amenity and enjoyment. Now, there are already moves being made around the country to address these concerns. Many grassroots campaigns are being mounted to save local venues. For example, my bill among my bill sponsors are the members for Bristol East and West, who have been campaigning with the Music Venue Trust in support of the Fleece in Bristol, a city where, incidentally, I am informed, has more office to uh, residential conversions than anywhere outside London. Two other sponsors, the members for Cardiff West and Central, have been supporting the Save Woman B Street campaign, along with the members for Cardiff North and South and Pen Cardiff South and Penarth. And that has led directly to the adoption of the Agent of Change principle across, across Wales, a welcome adoption by the Welsh Labour Government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another sponsor, the member for Somerton and Froome, is concerned to protect the rapidly growing cheese and grain, a much valued uh, venue in Froome to show it is not just the inner cities. The Mayor of London, with London Grassroots Music Venues Rescue Plan, has said he will be introducing an agent of change rule into the next London plan. As I mentioned, the Welsh Government have announced a similar move, and it is already under consideration by the Scottish Parliament and Government. My bill will provide the, le the legislative reinforcement. What my bill is aiming to do is to give much greater clarity and power for local councillors and the planning inspectors to incorporate this principle into planning decisions. So why do it? Why was I so receptive to this idea? And why is there such strong public support? Because it matters. Of course it matters for those who enjoy the entertainment and for whom it opens up new horizons. And obviously for the staff and owners of the venues. But it matters a lot more than that 
and not just for the nearby late-night late kebab shops. For a start, its impact on musicians. This is why the bill is being supported by the Musicians' Union. Less venues means less work, less opportunity to develop talent or even to find out you're not going to make it in the, in the industry. But also to move from amateur to part-time to full-time professional to national or even international star stardom. Just talking today to Billy Bragg, he mentioned to me that three times he tried to move from having an ordinary job and working part-time to being a full-time musician. It was the existence of the clubs and pubs and venues that enabled him to actually then finally make it onto the, onto the national stage. And we are in danger of taking away the ladder that has served both individual musicians and the music, music industry so well for so long. And what an industry. Not only are domestic sales rising again, we're second to the United States in international reach and sales. It's a huge boost to Britain standing around the world and our soft power, not to mention billions in overseas sales last year, let alone it being a significant part of our tourism offer. Now, there's a real concern that the industry is now depending on a great past with a lot of grey hair around. Now, I declare an interest. I'm in favour of good representation of grey hair, but also suppo I support refreshing the type pipeline with new talent. And there's no co that's no comment on the government reshuffle yesterday. There's a danger of mining rather than farming our musical heritage. And it's also narrowing a route of opportunity for working class youngsters, many from our deprived inner cities and left behind industrial towns. As a West Midlands MP, I'm of course proud to represent part of the area which gave birth to heavy metal, and I'm particularly focused on the cities and conurbations. However, I also recognise how damaging the loss of venues can be to the life and attractions of smaller towns, retaining youngsters and slowing the drift to the cities. All those factors are important. There's another factor that makes it imperative and why this requires urgent action either from Parliament or the Government. And given the wide level of cross-party support from ex-ministers, as, well as, as, as well as members of the MP4 band, I hope that the Government will adopt this measure and help to push it through. Yeah, yeah. And that factor is Brexit. As Brexit is happening and we face an uncertain future, it's vitally important that Britain is made more efficient and effective <laughs> across the board and we maximise every possible advantage that Britain has. One of these is clearly our cultural and entertainment office, offer, not only in London, but also in our other great centres around the country, many of which are, like Birmingham and Manchester, attracting increasing foreign investment and work, although, of course, Birmingham is the best venue for Channel 4. Companies clearly initially locate a range of hard-headed financial, economic and communication reasons. But the quality of life is also significant. It's partly about personal safety, environmental quality, a pleasant streetscape. But it's also about the answer to the basic questions, would I want to live there? And that's a question not only for companies, but also for the staff that they're seeking to attract, especially the highly mobile, technically skilled and talented international and multinational workforce, not least in our huge creative sector. The cultural and living environment is important to them. Now that means art galleries, theatres, concert halls, opera, ballet, football clubs, rugby clubs, other sporting environments, but it also means music venues and the street scene. And it poses a question to those who are being enticed to move abroad after Brexit, those companies, would you and your family, especially your children, and equally importantly your employees, prefer to live in London, Birmingham or Manchester? or in Frankfurt. This measure, I hope, will provide some small but useful assistance and relief for a valued industry, and I commend this bill to the House. Yeah. Order. The question is that the Right Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as of that opinion say aye. Aye. If the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Kevin Brennan, Sir Greg Knight, Pete Wishart, Joe Stevens, Mr Edward Vasey, Kerry McCarthy, David Warburton, Conor McGinn, Mr Nigel Evans, Thangham Debonair and myself, Mr Speaker. What a collection. <laughs>
Only one night of the month. Super group. Mr. John Speller. Planning Agent of Change Bill. Second reading what day? Friday the 19th of January. <laughs> Friday the 19th of January. A very good day. My birthday. 